my lovely, lovely imps. Just two days ago, we received the incredibly heartwarming news that conservative uh, celebrity uh, YouTuber Steven Crowder uh, formerly known for his performance on the uh, PBS television show, Arthur, uh, is having a divorce. Now, for most people, that wouldn't really be a big deal. But you see, Steven Crowder is a hyper-conservative uh, uh, broadcaster. And he talks about how evil divorce is. And he actually released a video um, ranting about how he felt that his wife shouldn't be allowed to divorce him, which is a very insane thing to broadcast to uh, his 5.4 million subscribers. So the divorce thing is a bit of a big deal for Mr. Crowder. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a shameful secret because you know he spends all his time talking about uh, how liberals are dissolving the 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 West and how gay people um, are dissolving the sanctity of marriage. And of course, he himself is going through a horrible and messy divorce, but it gets worse, okay? Today, uh, a journalist released footage that was uh, delivered anonymously. We don't know who it was, probably, admittedly, someone close to Steven Crowder. Uh, a, they released footage of Steven Crowder having, let's just say, what's the right word for this? He's having a bit of a moment with his wife, okay? And uh, when I say a moment, I mean emotional abuse. We're gonna watch this clip, but just be aware that, um, yeah, it's pretty fucking emotionally abusive. You're gonna see what I'm talking about when we watch it, but um, yeah, it's pretty intense. Um, and this was, uh, this was brought, uh, uh, this was a video that was recorded on a ring security device from his house. Now, this device also came alongside a reported statement from members of his wife's family, Hillary Crowder, uh, uh, Stephen Crowder's wife, uh, her family, uh, made public statements about the abuse that Hillary Crowder has is now alleging against Steven Crowder. Um, now, uh, before uh, before we go any further, um, this is an unfortunately common occurrence among right wing types. You see, uh, especially people who bat very hard at the conservative Christianity. Um, I grew up in an extreme conservative Christian movement, uh, which I left uh, upon reaching adulthood. Uh, but when I say that Christians, like especially conservative Christians, obviously liberal Christians is a little different, but conservative Christians, uh, they literally believe that wives are property. They literally believe that God has commanded women to be submissive to their husbands no matter what. They won't always say no matter what, but they basically mean no matter what. And when we saw uh, Steven Crowder talking about his divorce publicly, the thing that he said four times, I believe, during the video was that he believes that his wife should not have the right to divorce him, like legally. Like she should be legally forced to stay with him. This is part of the reason why we fight so hard against conservatism. This is part of the reason why I take such a strong stand against conservatives. And also, witnessing Steven Crowder's misery is a sublime pleasure for me. I will put my hand, my cards on the table 100%. Steven Crowder, literally today, okay, released a video of him laughing at people with Down syndrome just for having Down syndrome. I'm, I'm not joking with you. Um, in fact, um, I think we can actually see that if you guys wanna just understand the level of, of, of horribleness uh, that Steven Crowder is. But let me also remind you that this is the guy who did a funny skit reenacting the murder of George Floyd in which he 
um, joked about how funny it was and how unrealistic it was. Um, this is also, of course, the uh, uh, the guy who um, uh, this is also the guy who did a a skit. Uh, where he dressed up like a stereotypical Chinese person, uh, like a la like a 1950s cartoon, and then reenacted himself killing children because in his mind, that's what Chinese people do. So you should never feel bad for anything bad that happens to Steven Crowder. And what we are about to see will just show you even further that this guy is absolutely getting what, what's coming to him because all this guy does is pedal in absolutely, in absolute misery, in, uh, in mistreatment, in misogyny, and in bigotry. That is his entire platform. That is what he pushes. His worldview is all just an excuse for him to continue being a gigantic piece of shit. Yeah, here we go. Here's the clip. Let's just watch. You guys don't think I'm, you could, just in case anyone here, oh, sorry, let me, uh, let me hide this text real quick. We're not actually playing this game real quick. There we go. There we go. Uh, real quick. Just in case anybody thinks that uh, anything that I've said about Steven Crowder is made up. In case anybody has a small inkling of being like, oh, isn't it bad to poke fun at the fact that he's getting divorced? No, we should be celebrating the fact that his wife is getting free from this absolute psycho. We'll give children the opportunity to play. So for context, this is a, uh, Barbie has made a line of, uh, a line of Barbie dolls that are, designed to be, uh, they're basically designed after real models who have Down syndrome. And this is done because there are people, there are people out there who have Down syndrome who don't have any dolls that look like them. This isn't like, a, there's nothing shocking or, 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 or horrifying about this. Just a company made some dolls that are meant to be inclusive of people who might have Down syndrome. So that's the context. He's looking at these dolls now. The world's first Barbie with Down syndrome will give children the opportunity to play with more inclusive dolls. This doll is breaking barriers, <laughs> like creating the first fashion doll yeah, with, with retard Down strength. Is this real? Allowing more children to project their future through fashion doll play and imagine what is possible. Mattel, Barbie's parent company, announced the oh, new no. figures will soon be hitting store <laughs> oh, shelves. No. Well, here's the thing. They, they really have been going full bore, and Mattel actually announced plans to expand this uh, in the name of diversity uh, before the end of the year with Sickle Cell Barbie. Oh, for the So love that's of something they also, you know, look, <laughs> everyone's... The world's first Barbie. Ha <laughs> ha. So, yeah, just so you guys know, just, uh, sorry, I, I earlier stated that this was from today. I'm sorry, this was from two days ago. I believe that was literally, um... I believe this was literally the, uh, the, uh, uh, from the same stream that he was announcing his divorce, which I'm sure everybody is super sad for the extremely kind Crowder. The guy. So anyway, without any further ado, we are now going to watch the footage, uh, of Steven Crowder and Steven Crowder's wife. Uh, 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 which was released by Yashar Ali, um, on his Substack, uh, and yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna watch it. Let's, let's react and let's see what we have to talk about. Yeah. Ex-wife. Yes, they are actually formally divorced now, so it is true. It's his ex-wife. Um, yep. So let's look into it. Here we go. I drew a boundary. I drew a boundary. No, no, you just did, you just did it. I drew a boundary of abuses and cruel. Abusive. You were not taking the car. Because if you refuse to do wifely things, then I will go pick up the groceries. American groceries. I do have Steaks, to wood pellets, my grill. I know it's an unreasonable request, but I'll go do it. How about you first? Hillary, how do you respect the man? Yes, how do you man? How do man? You see the love of that. No, no. I don't mean to be No, you're not taking the car. You're not taking the car. You are not then taking the car. Then I will ask someone to pick me up. Would you like me to ask? Oh, that's right. It's not about Steven. Get an Uber. Okay, Steven, I can't. 
feeling some constraints? Steven. Like, I can't Steven. go. I, listen to me. Listen to me. You want to walk out right now? Listen to me. I can't go to the gym. I can't go to my parents. I can't call my friends. I can't go. I can't be home. You're going to take the car and leave me here. Hillary, just think of how boxed in you've made me. What do you need me to pick up? I'll get it. I'll be back when I'm back. No, that doesn't work either. You'll be back when you're back. That doesn't work either. See, I, I, do you understand the difference between my life being set to the second and you're going to be back when I'm back? So we got a few more minutes left in this clip and we're gonna watch the rest of the clip, but I just wanted to take this little moment to point out the fact that um, what you are witnessing here is a absolute textbook case of Darvo. He insists that you cannot take the car, you are not allowed to leave, you are not allowed to do the things that you're doing because that's crossing my boundary. And I wanna be clear about this because it's something that I think a lot of people uh, hear the word Darvo and they don't really know what it means or what it looks like. But a, but a sort of textbook example of Darvo, which by the way uh, means um, uh, uh, deny, uh, uh, attack, reverse, victim, and offender. That's what DARVO stands for. Deny, attack, reverse, victim, and offender. Um, it's a type of, uh, it is a commonly uh, observed uh, type of abuse. And um, what you can see here is him utilizing this language of abuse. He's saying, you're crossing my boundary by saying that I'm uh, uh, being abusive right now. You've crossed a boundary. I put a boundary that says that you can't tell me I'm doing something wrong. And then he re re he does this again later saying, look at how much you've boxed me in. You've trapped me. You, by you taking the car, uh, uh, it means that I can't do the things that I want to do, even though he doesn't even have anything right now that he wants to do. He just sort of lists off a bunch of things that he could do. And then he also says, he tells her, you need to take an, an Uber. Um, why can't he take an Uber? Why is he saying, oh, are you feeling some constraints? Isn't that, isn't that a, bit, uh, uh, a bit odd? Now, I'm going to talk about the wifely duties and the other things, but I kind of already mentioned that at the beginning of this, didn't I? Um, remember how I said that conservatives literally believe that their wives are required by God to be submissive? That's what he's talking about. You're not being wifely. How are you supposed to respect the men? And in his mind, respecting the men means never never telling him he's doing anything wrong, never saying, hey, this is cruel. A lot of people here are asking, how come he doesn't have two cars? And that's a very interesting question, isn't it? Um, you know, it could be plausible that other people who aren't Steven Crowder would not own two cars. But you have to remember, Steven Crowder is loaded, like crazy loaded. Like this guy is a millionaire, millionaire, millionaire. This guy is very loaded, okay? And he's not exactly... Um, Let's just say he doesn't believe in climate change. It's not like he's trying to downsize his carbon emissions by only having one car. In fact, it kind of seems like he only has one car because he's in control of the financial situation and having one car means that he can do he can put up a boundary, a manufactured boundary that conveniently restricts his wife's access. Very very strange, isn't it? Now, um, sometimes in abusive situations, especially ones where one partner controls all of the finances, you will see this type of thing happen, that there are uh, seemingly innocent things. Like for example, not having more than one car. It's true, Some, most people don't even have one car, but Steven Crowder is not most people. And you have to wonder if they're having so many conflicts with transportation, why does, why does he only have one car? And it starts to appear that this mundane idea, something that can be easily justified to people outside, uh, can be used as a way of controlling someone. Let's continue. The only way out of this is discipline respect. 
It's the only item in here we're at an impact. We are at an impact. What else can I even say to that? What else can I even say? Can we just play that back again? Let's just listen to that again real quick and just let's let's stew on that real quick. The only way out of it is we're at an impact. The only way out of it is discipline respect. If the only way out of it is we're at an impact. We are gonna get past. Good. Because you can't have any discipline respect. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. You throw your hand, you give up so easily. I don't give up so easily. You, know, you give up so easily. I, I just said the only way out of this is discipline and respect. And you said, then we're at an impasse. Steven, no, we are at an impasse, okay? I love you, but Steven, Steven, your abuse is sick. Your abuse watch it. is sick. Watch it. Fucking watch it. I'm gonna let go. I'll get what you need to get. And I, I need some space. We need to just talk and baby for a little bit, okay? I love you. I love you very much. I don't love you. That's the big problem. I've never received love from you. And the fact is, when I go, look, I need you to do A, B, C, and D, you just be disciplined about it, you go, no. But I love you more than life itself. Okay. Put on some gloves. No. But I love you more than life itself. That's not fair. That's not fair, and it's disingenuous. Okay. I'm going to pause there for a second, because obviously, this is insane. First of all, uh, just being like, watch it, watch it, making a threat like that, very obvious what's going on here. Very obvious threat. Secondly, I want you all to recall what we just saw him weepily uh, uh, acting, uh, his his weepy act that he put on on his show the other day going, I love my wife. I loved her so much that I married her. And then here in this moment, when it's, when it's convenient for him in private, he's willing to say, I don't love you because you never loved me. You won't do this, that, and the other thing that I've laid out for you. Now you might be wondering real quick, why he's talking about putting on gloves. Do you want to know what the original conflict was? Because there has been clarification from people who are familiar with the situation as to what's going on. As it turns out, this conflict was because his ex-wife um, was being told to give the dog, the dog that you can actually see sitting down here, medicine. Um, and that medicine can be absorbed through the skin um, and, F and, and is toxic to babies. Uh, Steven's ex-wife at the time of this video is pregnant with twins, which first of all, I don't know if you guys have ever tried to give medicine to a dog. It's not easy to give medicine to a dog even when you're not pregnant. But leaning, bending over handling a poisonous substance to get uh, uh to give to give to a dog that probably isn't going to want to eat its medicine is a pretty difficult thing and this motherfucker is sitting here getting mad about that while smoking a cigar right next to his pregnant with twins wife as if this situation couldn't get any more disgusting that once you know what they're actually fighting about, it becomes even more absurd. That this guy was trying to force his wife to handle poisonous, something that was poisonous to his unborn children. And that he was being stubborn and saying it's about discipline and punishment. It's about discipline and respect. Deranged. Let's continue. Hillary, you're right, right in past. Become someone as you may day in and day out worthy of a wife worth no matter the life. I didn't say Oh my god, man. I I just can't Remember, remember us watching Steven Crowder? I just don't understand. I loved her so much. Meanwhile, in this video, he's telling her that she needs to become somebody, that she needs to become a wife worthy of him. Fucking disgusting. What a putrid, disgusting piece of shit.
Do you want to wait? Jewelry? Jewelry, come on now. I'm not going to engage. I'm not going to engage anymore. I'm going to go. I'll get text me what you need. I'll get you what you need. I, I love you. I'm committed to you. Are you committed enough to do those things? I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to Are you committed enough to do those things? Back. You're not committed to anything. You're not committed to anything. You just said I love you and I'm committed to that. Walk the dogs, put on some gloves. I need to Walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? Are you committed enough to do those things? I'm going to just Walk the dogs, put on some gloves. Are you committed enough to get the medication the dogs do? No, you take, take that in. I don't know what this one is here. As the Crowders head inside, Steven gets angrier and angrier and by his own admission screams, I will fuck you up at his pregnant wife, Hillary, who then flees their home. Now, I don't know where the source for that is. I guess we'll have to go read the article by y Yashar Ali. Let me see if um, Yashar Ali has a citation for where that came from. In a statement sent to me by Hillary Crowder's family, they say that she spent years hiding her husband's mental and emotional abuse from her fami family, that he lied about the circumstances around their divorce publicly, and that he wasn't present for the birth of their children. Oh, yeah. Um, guys, I don't know if you guys knew this, but um, Steven Crowder chose to have a cosmetic, or not a cosmetic, but an electoral um, surgery. Do you guys remember... Um, when he had that surgery on his chest, um, so Steven Crowder has a, uh, has, it's called, uh, fuck, what's it called? Cavus, it's cavus excavatum, or pectus excavatum, sorry, pectus excavatum. Um, pectus excavatum is, um, it looks like this. It's like, uh, it's like when you have like a small indent in your chest. Here, here's a here's an example of a like a a mild case of it. Okay, it's a concave chest, so you can see there's like a there's like a divot in here. Um, lots of people. It's actually a fairly common thing. Um, pectus excavatum is is a a fairly common thing. Um, uh, and but there are varying severities. Um, some uh, in the most severe cases. Uh, it, it, it can really impact like your ability to breathe um, and uh, and like your posture and stuff like that. However, uh, in most cases, if it is a, in almost all cases, if it is a severe problem, the surgery will be done when you're young. Very few people who have severe pectus excavatum will end up having like, uh, will have negative effects um, into like, like, that aren't taken care of when they're young. The reason for that being that if you have severe pec pectus excavatum, it becomes a problem while you're young. You don't get to like age 30. Now, some people uh, do have minor negative effects. Uh, and also some people really don't like how it looks. Um, and is this why people are saying he had cosmetic surgery? Yes, because he had a very he had a tight like titanium bars put in to fix the pe pectus excavatum but he had that surgery at age 35 so while it is possible that 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 there were negative effects to his breathing or something along those lines from all we can tell um steven crowder is was perfectly healthy and it seems that he chose to have this surgery six months or sorry, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to get the date right. It was, I want to get the exact date. I want to make sure I'm not getting this wrong. It was right before his twins were born. Let me see if I can get the actual, uh, the actual date of it. Uh, I, I don't think I can, I don't think I can find it now. Um, I had the thing earlier. Um, it was a few, it was like a few months, um, before his twins were born. I believe I remember it saying that, uh, it was, it was, 
three to six months before the birth of his children. And this surgery that he got is highly invasive and does not have like a quick recovery time. He literally missed the date, the, the, the day of the birth of his children because he was still in recovery. He was not, he did not, he was not able to help out with his twins because of the surgery. Now keep in mind, this was not a surgery that was a life-threatening surgery, as far as anybody can tell in any re like, he could have scheduled it before, he could have scheduled it after. It just so happened that his wife had to take care of their newborn twins all by herself so that he could get a surgery that made him feel better. He literally could have just waited a little bit later, as far as anybody can tell. Which is wild, of course. I wanted to see where the claim, where, where this claim about the, uh, about the, Towards the end of the exchange, Hillary Crowder says to her husband, your abuse is sick. And he snaps at her saying, watch it, fucking watch it. Moments later, off camera, Steven Crowder, by his own admission, would lose control and scream at his pregnant wife in a, in a threatening tone. I, excuse me, I will fuck you up, he says, which led his wife to flee their home. In a statement sent to me by Hillary Crowder's family, they say she spent years hiding her husband's mental and emotional abuse, that he lied about the circumstances and that he wasn't present for the birth of their children. Documentary evidence I reviewed while reporting this story backs up their assertions. The statement in its entirety is printed later on in the story. Okay, let's see if we can read the statement. Here's the statement from Hillary Crowder's family, okay? We're gonna, this is the, this is a formal statement that was released by Hillary's family. Hillary is currently living alone in Dallas, apart from her family and support system in Michigan, and is focused on taking care of her young children. She is not prepared at this time to speak about her divorce becoming public or the misleading statements made by Steven Crowder about their relationship. The truth is that Hillary spent years hiding Steven's mentally and emotionally abusive behavior from her friends and family while she attempted to save their marriage. She was the one who was asking to work on the relationship to keep the marriage intact on behalf of their unborn children. In June of 2020, 21, Stephen left their home to pursue an elective surgery. Okay, that's where that, that comes from. So that was in June of 2021. Hillary urged him to get the help he needed to address his abuse with the hope that their marriage could be saved and that they could peacefully live together as a family. Instead, Stephen refused to do so and chose not to be with his wife during the birth of their twin children. After the birth, Stephen bought a town ho ho house and left their home permanently. So he moved out. He was the one who moved out. What an absolute lying piece of shit. Once the children were born, he literally moved out of the house to avoid being around the children. Oh my God. Hillary was unaware that Stephen had hired a divorce attorney and asked his assistant to cut Hillary off financially. Holy fucking shit, dude. Holy fucking shit. There we have it. Explicit uh, evidence of of using his financial advantage to control her life. He was the one who initiated. He lied about all of this shit. What's wild is, the wildest part of this is that this means almost assuredly that he hired a divorce attorney to threaten her and then she just decided to go through with the divorce and he couldn't believe that she would actually do that. Well, see, that's the thing, Fought Knight. He only hired a divorce attorney. He didn't actually, it doesn't say that he filed the divorce. In fact, it would seem that she was the one who went through with it, even though he was using the threat of divorce to try and control her. To control her. That is insane. We hope that Stephen will cease speaking publicly about these personal matters in an untruthful manner. We also look forward to there being full transparency in the legal process so there is fairness and accountability for the actions that caused the divorce and to ensure the outcome is what is in the best interest of the young children.
He berates her for, uh, this is a separate part. He berates her for not doing her wifely duties in a way that pleases him. Holy shit. In the review of audio, video, and text messages that were submitted, Steven Crowder repeatedly admits that he has a volcanic temper and has been working through therapy to try and control it. However, at one point of the audio files I was sent, Steven Crowder gets, so, gets upset because he's frustrated that he's not giving enough credit for not having lost his temper, but then adds that he can't promise he won't lose it again in the future. Two of Steven's former workers say that he created a cult-like atmosphere in the workplace and is intolerant of dissent. You're either fully for him or you're his enemy, Former one former employee told me on Wednesday. Holy shit. Incredible. This is the marriage. This is the marriage that these conservatives that all these types of people, the Matt Walshes, the Candace Owens, the Steven Crowders, uh, the Tim Pools. I mean, Tim Pool just had a whole segment uh, like two days like two days ago talking about how he believes in arranged marriage because of shit like this. Actually insane. This is what, this is the world. This is the type of relationship that conservatives think is good. Keep in mind that tons of people are bemoaning the fact that his wife is leaving him despite the video evidence we now have of how he treats his wife. Holy shit. This is what conservatives fight for. This is unironically the world that they fight for. Tim Pool and a bunch of other conservatives spent the last two days ranting about how no-fault divorces shouldn't be allowed. Oh, we have, do we have a direct tweet from, from the Timcast? Publishing this was gross. Tim Pool is such a fucking piece of shit. This is conservatives for you. Just in case you ever needed to, uh, just in case you, you ever need a refresher on the fact that the conservative movement just hates women, that there is literally no room for women to be happy at all in the conservative movement, Oh, Candace Owens is on it. If this were Alec Baldwin caught on camera, every person in conservative media would condemn this and play it on repeat. Telling your eight-month pregnant wife that you are going to fuck her up is the behavior of monsters. There is no justification. Change my mind. Damn, Candace Owens going hard here. Well, she smells blood. We know that they have a whole bunch of fight. They have they have a whole bunch of bad blood between them. Yeah, but just remember. Guys, don't don't give too much credit to Candace Owens here. She's obviously it's it's not it's a very low bar to say, yes, a guy who has all of the financial control screaming at his pregnant eight months pregnant wife that he's going to fuck her up is actually um yeah, it's pretty that's a pretty fucked up thing. That's a pretty low bar to cross. Keep in mind that Candace Owens peddles this same garbage all of the rest of the year it's just you know she can take an easy an easy w here by dunking on steven crowder absolutely deranged absolutely deranged if you got a clip for that we can watch it she goes into further detail well, we watched the one from the other day, but I don't know if that's a... I don't know if there's a new one. I guess we could go take a look. Let's take a look. Maybe she talked about it. I s Steven Crowder is a monster. All right. All right. Let's do it. Let's find out. So a bit of a break... Here we go. So here's her watching the thing. We're going to skip her watching it, and we're just going to get her reaction. All right, let's see what Candace Owens has to say. 
Let's do it. Any man can speak to a woman like that, uh, least of all when she is eight months pregnant. And sadly, that isn't the worst part of that correspondence. The journalist that dropped this video is Yashar Ali. He dropped this as well as a Substack, a, a Substack entry accompanying it. On the Substack article, he wrote, moments later, off camera, Steven Crowder, by his own admission, would lose control and scream at his pregnant wife in a threatening tone, quote, I will f you up, end quote, which led his wife to flee their home. He, she then sent a statement, which I want to be very clear, this sta statement I knew was going to come out. I didn't know any of this information. I had no idea there was a video or there was any evidence. I did know that their family was thinking about issuing a statement. And Hillary Crowder did issue a statement. And I'm going to read you that statement in its entirety because it's important. I think it reveals a lot of the lies that Stephen has been telling publicly to his audiences. It reads, Hillary is currently living alone in Dallas apart from her one. family and support system. Time to we read this behavior one. asking for Steve to pursue elective surgery because I know exactly what surgery she's referring to. Because during my first backstage here at Daily Wire, we actually prayed for Stephen and this surgery. So before we, I show you a clip from us on backstage, here is Stephen describing that surgery, and it certainly doesn't sound like it's elective. Take a listen. I explained to you a little bit what it is. You know, a lot of people say, why are you smoking? My heart is actually great, but my heart doesn't work great. And the reason my heart doesn't work great is, long story short, because of a connective tissue disorder I have, and uh, my chest is, is caving in on my heart. So I've got about, I, I, I'm at a little more than half of the blood flow that you guys have, ventricular output from my heart. So it's a mechanical fix. Um, and I don't know, maybe I'll feel like Lance Armstrong, you know, like I'm on EPO after this because I don't know what it's like to go through life with full blood flow. To me, I'm looking forward to it, not looking forward to the pain. Lance Armstrong, by the way, with, with, uh, with, with, with the three balls, not the, not the one. Um, so yeah, it's actually, it's overall a positive thing. And honestly, I- 50% heart, heart volume reduction does not sound accurate here. I think he's just bullshitting. Like, I don't think you'd be able to, like, if you had 50% heart volume, I don't think you'd be able to stay upright most of the time, especially smoking cigars like he does. I think he was just making that up. Probably needed a little bit of rest. Uh, it comes in the form of having my chest cracked open. Obviously, he had the surgery, and then his lung collapsed. And here is us praying for him. Praying. I remember when his. I remember when his lungs collapsed. That he actually gets better. Some people are saying that you can have much lower heart function and not even know it, and other people are saying that he wouldn't be able to stand. He's like six three, isn't he? Isn't he really tall? And he smokes. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm pretty sus of his claims here. Before we leave, I just have to, this one th off the subject for a minute. Our, our pal, Steve Crowder, who makes the best ashtrays uh, in the country, <laughs> Truly. is in the hospital fighting for his life. Uh, and uh, he's really come close. He's come close to the, the, dark, uh, the dark edge of things. And I just want to say that uh, crazy as he is, we love him and uh, we're thinking about him. That, uh, you know, we hope he makes it back. You're, you're a better man than I am. <laughs> uh, well, that's I, true. I was actually just looking forward to the show being over so that I could text him. <laughs> <laughs> and say, you know, <laughs> hope you don't make it, pal. You know, actually, this is this is a real story. Last night, I had to go for a drive because I a long story, but I had to burn down gas to take my car into the shop. And so I was going to smoke a cigar and, you know, I was going to say my nightly prayers. I thought, oh, you know, I should probably pray for Crowder, you know, because he's in this. And I thought, oh, well, you know, it's great. I'm going to light up one of the cigars that Crowder sent me. Yeah. And it Crowder, this guy who's a complete maniac, he sent me these beautiful cigars. And I was like, oh, pal, I'm going to send you some cigars right away from my humidor. Haven't sent him a single thing, you know, but that guy, he, you know, really a gener generous fellow. And I actually got enough credit. I actually did text him and say that we were praying for him at great risk to our souls. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, if, and, and if he dies, I prefer. Dad, this guy fucking hates Crowder. What's this guy's? What's this guy? What dirt does this guy have on Crowder? I want to know. I want to know what lefty's got over here. 
actually will kill him. <laughs> and yet, according to his wife, this was an elective surgery, a really a cosmetic surgery, because Stephen didn't like the way that his chest looked because he had a sunken chest. It was not something that was actually required to save his life. And yet, we yep. see that same pattern of behavior. Stephen garnering a ton of affection. Now, to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, you know, that's... We always are super fair. I mean, usually I am actually pretty fair to people. But to be fair, it could be that it was impacting his life. I'm not going to rule that out. I don't think that, he, I mean, I think he was lying about 50% uh, heart power. I don't think that's accurate. Uh, I, I think that would be uh, that would be shocking that he would be able to have made it to like 35 uh, at his height and weight and his level of activity. Uh, with 50% reduced heart function and they never like the doctors were never like we need to do this surgery I just think he made that up to sound like a badass um, But it is possible that it wasn't purely cosmetic um, And yeah, why did he choose to, to, to have this such that it would overlap with him not having to do any work with his kids and having to dump basically trap his wife in the house with twins That's a, a supremely selfish act and prayers from his followers purporting to be the victim, when in fact the facts don't line up with his narrative. The second portion that I'd like to point to is where it says Hillary was not aware that Stephen hired a divorce attorney. This stands in stark contrast to what he told his followers when he said how hard divorce was and how difficult and horrific it had. Killjoy says, I'm missing just 11% of my lung capacity and it's fucking brutal. I can't imagine missing 50% heart capacity and not somehow being, and like somehow not being wheelchair bound. Yeah, that's the thing. I think he was just trying to sound like a badass. It seems like he was trying to justify why he needed to have the surgery right then and there, when in reality, the real reason is that he didn't like how it made him look. And he figured, if I do the surgery now, not only can I change the way that I look, uh, but also I will avoid having to do a bunch of work and I will further isolate my wife from her friends and family been and how he really didn't want it and just you know texas is a no-fault divorce state what is the truth here i don't know obviously right now we have his wife's word versus steven's word but given my personal experience with steven i am very much inclined to believe his wife now i'd like to get in some other portions of this article calliope says do you think it could have been a narcissistic move because she was getting attention from the pregnancy Unironically, given what we've seen today, I would not rule that out. I don't have any evidence that it's something like that, uh, but it is supremely self-centered regardless. So uh, I think it's a possibility. The video that we watched, obviously that we just watched, was deranged. I mean, he was screaming at an eight months pregnant wife about how she wouldn't handle dog poison for the dog that was literally sitting right next to him. Like the man, could literally just take, just feed it to the dog, but he was yelling at his wife about discipline and respect, wifely duties, and how she isn't a worthy wife to him because she won't handle the dog poison. Absolutely deranged. Mixed Dizzy says, also, I don't know if he's telling the truth about a connective tissue disorder, because if you have a connective tissue disorder, well, you don't tend to look like Crowder does. I have a disorder called bicuspid aortic valve that causes a, a regurgitative murmur, murmur, and my doctors are looking into Ehlers-Danlos, Eller, and I don't know anyone with a connective tissue disorder who looks like Crowder and needs that type of surgery. Yeah. I mean, that's what, that's the whole thing that everybody said, which is that which is just it's common knowledge um if you have cavus uh what's it called a pectus excavatum you if it's severe it's taken care of in childhood because you won't make it to adulthood um if it's not severe um some people do have reduced like athletic capabilities um but usually not like to the degree that you wouldn't have it done earlier in life Sorry, sorry, uh, I just realized. Uh, uh, Retcon says, I'm pretty sure it's dog medicine and not dog poison. Yes, I'm, it, it's poisonous to the babies. Uh, the whole thing is, it is dog medicine. Sorry, I, I misspoke. It is, it is dog medicine, but it's poisonous 
uh, because it can get it can be absorbed through the skin and it can cause birth defects, which is why she didn't want to handle it. She was literally looking out for for her children, and Steven Crowder was being a weird uh, uh, f misogynistic freak. That's just a misspeak. Which I think are really important. The writer has a bunch of audio files and text messages that were sent to him that he was able to review. He writes, in audio files and text messages that I reviewed, Steven Crowder admits to some of his faults, which include a volcanic temper repeatedly and at times regretfully. But according to sources that I spoke to who are familiar with their relationship, Crowder's admissions often came after a sustained period of mental and emotional abuse, and he didn't seem to be able to control his impulses. That, again, is something that I have seen personally. Very bizarre that he would insert me into a divorce announcement and a purport that I somehow extorted him. It's very bizarre in the way that he attacked the Daily Wire. And there just seem to be a lot of signs that he is not able to control his emotions. And so the question that I will ask is how many people are going to allege abuse from Steven Crowder before we listen? before we stop saying he's one of us because he says things that he agrees with. We purport that we are the party of family values. How can you look at that video and defend him in any way? How can you look at that video and not roundly condemn this and say this is not something that actually- Dust Aeon says, I have a severe heart inflammation disorder that nearly killed me. Luckily, only quote unquote 2% of my heart doesn't work anymore. And even more luckily, I happen to have an unusually large heart. I'm a very tall person. So my heart was able to work better or more than normal people's hearts. But at the time, my doctor told me that a person with a normal sized heart would have restrictions that would impact them even if it's only 2% that's not working. So yeah, he's full of shit. Yeah, he's full of shit. Hold on, let's, let's go back. I wanna hear what Candace is saying real quick. Very bizarre that he would insert me into a divorce announcement and a purport that I somehow extorted him. It's very bizarre in the way that he attacked the Daily Wire. And there just seem to be a lot of signs that he is not able to control his emotions. And so the question that I will ask is how many people are going to allege abuse from Steven Crowder before we listen, before we stop saying he's one of us because he says things that he agrees with. We purport that we are the party of family values. How can you look at that video and defend him in any way? How can Candace is actually correct here. And I want to remind you that the only reason that Candace is, is acting like this is because he directly called her out. You have to realize every other conservative figure has been siding with Steven Crowder, Tim Poole, Ben Shapiro, all these people. They, they either directly siding with him or indirectly siding with him by promoting the exact same arguments that he uses. Candace, who was directly called out by name and has pre-existing beef with Steven Crowder, just, just keep that in mind. But hey, credit where credit is due to Candace Owens. That's right, you heard it here, folks. Credit where credit is due because at least even though we know that she's got a lot of self-interest involved, at least she's actually saying what everybody who has a brain should be saying, which is that this is deranged abuse, that he's very clearly keeping his, or has been keeping his ex-wife basically functionally prisoner. Critical support in this particular. Yeah, go ahead, clip it. You got it. Let's go. Can you look at that video and not roundly condemn this and say this is not something that actually represents the things that we believe? The writer goes. Okay, but it does. See, there she goes too far. It absolutely does represent exactly what they believe. Christian conservatives talk all the time about how women need to be submissive, how women should have less autonomy, how women these days are just have high body counts and all this shit. All that they talk about is putting is the building the circumstances that fo that put women into exactly this circumstance. Guys, I hate to tell you this, but women being treated this way is not exactly news, okay? This is a this was the norm for the for most of the history of the United States of America, okay? Uh women only got the ability to have an independent bank account in the 1970s. So let's just Let's just remember that, okay? The conservatives 
are constantly building the exact circumstances that people like Hillary Crowder are put into. Conservatives constantly advocate to remove women's abilities to fight back against abuse, to basically set up the, the, the legal system, to set up uh, fi the financial system in ways that favor men, that give men power over women. They constantly target and denigrate uh, uh, women who come forward with abuse whenever it's convenient to them. So, yeah. I just, I think that Candace is correct in saying that this is deranged behavior, but totally dishonest when saying that uh, the, the, the conservative movement supports uh, treating your wife uh, 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 like she's an equal. The conservative movement, which is predominantly Christian, predominantly Christian, believes that wives are not equal to their husbands. They are less than. They are supposed to be submissive and respectful. This shit doesn't, the words that he used in that video that we just watched are echoed by tons of other people. Steven Crowder has been saying these things publicly. It just takes a kick in the ass when you see Steven Crowder screaming at his wife that she needs to be more submissive and that she's not being as submissive as he wants. Just keep in mind, we on this channel have watched Steven Crowder publicly say things about how wives need to be submissive and, and respectful and need to have discipline and do what their husbands tell them. And nobody, none of these fucking conservative grifter assholes will say anything then because they believe in that. But they'll, oh, I disavow, I disavow when it looks bad. On to say, like so many things in his life in recent years, Crowder's temper and paranoia led him to destroy his relationships with Sir Shapiro, Boring, and others at The Daily Wire when he posted a video on his channel suggesting that The Daily Wire, without naming the company, was attempting wait, to align wait. itself with- Just the real quick. Do you guys remember when we read uh, Dennis Prager's article about the responsibilities of a wife, how a resp uh, how wives are uh, are morally required to have sex with their husband whenever, regardless of what they want? Do you guys, we read those on stream. Dennis Prager, okay? Not exactly been outcast from the conservative movement, okay? These conservatives, the, the, the ideas that conservatives put forward are made manifest in this video of Steven Crowder. And this video of Steven Crowder is what their beliefs look like in practice. In their belief system, Steven Crowder is correct. And you see this because other conservatives are siding with him. They are saying, why isn't she being wifely? Why isn't she being a worthy wife? Why isn't she showing deference to God and man? That they do this all the time. Big tech by mentioning in their initial offer to him that if he was demonetized on social media platforms that it would reduce his overall compensation. Well, again, going back to the pattern, it's not just the Daily Wire, it's David Landau, it's Sven the Computer, it's Jared Monroe, formerly known as Not Gay Jared, people that are locked into NDAs and are not allowed to speak about the abuse that they endured by Steven Crowder. It's Owen Benjamin, it's now his wife. Do you believe that all of these various different parties, the majority of them who have never spoken to each other, I have never spoken to Sven the Computer, I've never spoken to David Landau, I've never spoken to Hillary Crowder, I've never spoken to Owen Benjamin. Do you believe that all of these people, as is the paranoid narrative that Steven Crowder is presenting, are working maybe in, in collusion with big tech to try to destroy him? Or, or do you believe it's plausible that Steven Crowder is just a monster? I personally believe that he is a monster. And that is, by the way, Stephen, if you're watching, I'm not trying to extort you. I am just simply telling the truth. There was a lot of things that are going on. And I am glad that his wife found the strength to speak out. And I'm calling upon everybody to roundly condemn this, to, to reject this firmly, not to somehow complicate. Sorry, Candace, they're not doing it. The other conservatives, they don't care. The other conservatives are are actually being more honest than you are. Uh, 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 even though I think you're right. 
I actually think Candace Owens is correct to condemn Steven Crowder here. There, you heard it right here. You fucking heard it from my mouth. Candace Owens gets a, a gets a good a good point here. Uh, but all the rest of the conservatives are being more honest about their beliefs and being like, yeah, yeah, look at his bitch wife. <laughs> excuse and say, oh, well, it's a divorce, so we shouldn't talk about it. We should mind our own business. No, the way that we represent ourselves privately and publicly should be the same. The same. If you purport to care about family values, again, then you should care about this situation and you should condemn it. Yashar Ali also added in this article, in reviewing documentary evidence related to their marriage, Stephen Crowder appears to be obsessed with the idea that his wife is only interested in him for money. Hillary Crowder started dating him well before he became famous and wealthy. He was making less than $100,000 a year when they got married. Again, the Crowder narrative never seems to line up with the reality. And on that note, for those of you that are asking for an update, yes, I did send a cease and desist to him regarding his comments that I somehow extorted him. I sent the cease and desist. I heard back from his lawyer. And essentially what I get from this is that his lawyer is saying that this was just his opinion and it was just even Crowder's feelings. And even though it wasn't reality, too bad, so sad. Here's exactly what that legal letter back to me said. I'm, I'm going to read you a couple of quotations. Retcon says him him talking angrily about his divorce while having a gun on his desk is so unnerving. It's doubly unnerving now that we've seen this video. Now that we've seen the video of how he acts in private. I, like, it's so funny. Uh, I was making a whole bunch of jokes about how, mu how much of a piece of shit he probably is behind clo closed doors. And not two days later, we have confirmation that all of my fucking predictions were 100% accurate. I mean, to be fair though, not to like downgrade my own predictive abilities, but people like Steven Crowder are a dime a dozen in the conservative movement, okay? I really mean that. If there's anything that people can take away from this video today, it's that you need to understand just how, how far abuse apologia goes in the conservative movement. They dehumanize women from the get-go as a matter of their politics. It is core to their worldview. Yeah, I've even made jokes about the hostage situation with his co-host. Well, it's so obvious. It was, it's so obvious by the way that they act, how he treats his co-workers, that he demands these people laugh at all of his jokes. He will make a joke that is so stupid, that is so poorly written, that no one in their right mind would laugh at it. And then his little chuckle fuck idiot hostages go over there and go, <laughs> yeah, good one, Steve. <laughs> yeah, so good. Dust Ann says, to quote Vosh, Demon Mama, who never misses, true! True. No, I didn't hear about that retcon. What is it? He apparently has a button that sets off a light on set when someone else is talking so much so they know to shut the fuck up and give him more airtime. Oh my god! Retcon says on Majority Report they were talking about how he flashes a light at his co-host if they're being too funny. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh no! That is so incredible! Me pushing the bazinga button to tell my co-host to stop outclassing me. Bazinga. My dad says I'm the star. Yeah, exactly. Dude, what a fucking loser. Wouldn't it be I hope I hope I, I'm gonna say this. I truly hope that that uh Hillary Crowder gets him for all that he's worth. I hope that he is penniless when this is over. Unfortunately, he has a lot of powerful allies and a ton of people who are doing damage control for him. However, I will note 
in his original video, he stated that uh, he, he like, he basically couched everything by saying there's going to be a whole bunch of dirt coming out. So I would be shocked if this is the last thing that we hear uh, coming out. I bet a ton of their fights have been, uh, t uh, have been uh, recorded unintentionally, unaware to him. And I would not be surprised. I have no evidence of this, I should be clear, but I personally would not be surprised if we discovered that there was physical violence involved in their relationship. Um, it's pretty rare that somebody uh, is that level, uh, like is, is wielded, is like, is like trapped in that level of a hostage situation uh, where like just on a random sunny day over dog pills, um, uh, you know, he starts screaming, I'm going to fuck you up. And that it's very hard for me to believe that he never engaged in physical violence ever once in that type of relationship where he's blowing up because she won't take the dog for a walk uh, or, or because she won't give the dog the medicine and then take the dog for a walk. I would be shocked, okay? I would be shocked. He literally got up and chased her. He, in in my opinion, he's definitely threatened violence before. Yeah. Uh, uh, the behavior there uh, indicates to me that this guy is not just emotionally uh, abusive, but I mean, he was he was just fucking gaslighting her like it was nothing. Like 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 he just whipped out that that Christian justification. He whipped out the emotional cruelty that I don't really love you because you've never really loved me. He broke out the Darvo. Uh, excuse me, you violated my boundary. My boundary being don't ever tell me that I'm ever wrong ever or else I'll freak out on you. Deranged. Merrick says, by the time it got to this this type of stuff with my husband, he'd hit me ages ago. I'm really sorry to hear that, but yeah, uh, I I I think that it would be very shocking uh, to if if he was telling the truth that there was never any physical abuse. Um, I just I, I I'm sorry. Uh, when you self describe as someone with volcanic, uncontrollable anger, that's how he described himself. Okay, when you're telling people that it's their fault that you're uh uh that they're not grateful enough for how uh how angry you are now that you should be more angry than you are that is like a level of abusive uh derangement that i don't think is going to be limited to him just yelling and screaming absurd Do we think Crowder is going to go men going their own way? Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully Crowder will have a psychic collapse and will uh, just spiral off into derangement as he gets publicly humiliated, uh, as more and more people uh, uh, turn against him because it becomes impossible not to. Uh, personally, I think it's good that this stuff gets published as far and wide as possible and uh, uh, because conservatives should be forced to deal with the, the worldview that they created. Steven Crowder, believe it or not, is living in accordance with his values. His values are disgusting, okay? Steven Crowder is doing, I mean, he literally used Christian justification to badger his wife there. He used the beliefs that he talks about on his show all the time. Conservatives need to be forced to confront this as as much as possible. And the more that he's dropped, the more that he's isolated, the further that this freak is from having a platform, the better the world will be. Because keep in mind that this guy's blasting this type of messaging, this type of behavior, the type of behavior that pr that promotes abuse towards women, that promotes laughing at people with disabilities, that promotes mocking people because of their race, that laughs at the death of people uh, just because of the color of their skin. That's who he's broadcasting out to 5.5 million subscribers on YouTube. So I hope that she takes him for all it's worth. I hope that takes a toll on his mental health. I hope this drives him to increasing acts of desperation. And ultimately, I hope that Steven Crowder, his entire platform is removed from underneath him because Steven Crowder 
is indeed a monster. But you know what's even worse is that his worldview, which is equally supported by all of his conservative compatriots, is more monstrous even than he is alone. I wonder if he will go down the Kanye West route and become a full-on Nazi. He already, he already made, he already made Nazi jokes on his show many times. Do you remember just like a few weeks ago, he made the jokes about people with Jewish last names? He doesn't have very far to go. Like Steven Crowder is here and full-on Nazi is like right here. There's like that much space between him and a full-on Nazi. Anyway, if you enjoyed this coverage of the downfall of one of the worst people on the planet, please make sure that you press that subscribe button down below, ring the bell, and of course, please leave a comment with your thoughts. Did you think that everything I said was out uh, was was unrealistic? Did you think that I was on point? Does Demon Mama never miss? Leave it in the comments below because it means the world to me to hear from my lovely, lovely imps. Of course, we'll have a lot more of this coming, I'm sure. I have no doubt that there's going to be a lot more dirt coming out on Steven Crowder, and we will cover it. Absolutely.